G'day, it's Rowan from Elfshot Design. In this video, I'm going to put together a Gamco forge kit using this 9 kilo LPG bottle. I'm also going to build a trolley that's going to have the forge on top, some drawers underneath for metal offcuts, and maybe a few tool hangers on the side. Let's do it. Here's a rough 3D sketch. To keep this video from going too long, I'm going to focus more on the forge building aspect and a little bit less on the trolley fabrication. The main features are a sliding tool rest to support longer pieces of iron, side handles to hang blacksmithing tools, and two sliding drawers to store offcuts. The frame is 35mm square hollow section and the sheeting is 1.5mm. A safety note, I'm not a professional gas fitter, I'm showing you what I've done but you have to make your own call based on how confident you are with the required processes, tools and laws in your area. Building a gas forge is dangerous. You're working with lethal gases and refractory ceramic fibre, which is nasty stuff. You certainly should not be attempting this without suitable personal protective equipment. And with that being said, let's go and crack an LPG bottle. Luckily I was able to mount the base in my vise and unscrew the valve just with a large spanner. These can be hard to get off because they're glued in with a penetrating thread locking fluid. All you really need to do though is get some decent leverage, a way to hold the bottle, and some grim facial expressions. Gas bottles can be sitting around for many years and still contain liquid or gas vapour residue. Unlike other liquid fuels like diesel or petrol, LPG propane doesn't really go off. That means you can't be too careful. The next thing I'll do is fill the bottle with water to purge out any gas. I should mention too that I open the tap for a good while before removing the valve. You can add soapy water to this and leave it for a few days. Just to let it really soak in. To be extra cautious, I'm cutting this open while it's still full of water. I'm using my battery angle grinder because water and electricity are another one of those things that can kill you. Some guys like to cut the forge doors while the cylinder is still in one piece, but I like to cut it in half first. It's only a couple of tack welds once everything is clean. That way I can give it a good scrub to wash away the smell. Ethyl mercaptan is added to the gas to create an intentionally bad smell, which helps us identify gas leaks. And I don't want to get any of this stuff in my clothes. I used a flap disc and a sander to remove all the paint. In hindsight, I should have hit it with some paint stripper. For some reason I didn't do this, even though I was planning on doing it. Sometimes you start doing something one way, and then see it through due to stubborn determination and a lack of common sense. Alright, well, it's time to think through the trolley. Pretty simple welds in this project, but well, I am tacking up each corner in two places, two tacks. Do both ends of the trolley and then line them up, make sure everything's square and the same, and then I can go through and weld these properly. Perfect.
So I've sunken this down basically where I want it to sit, just slightly below the surface, centered it, now I measure in from the sides, measure up the shape of the cradle supports. These will basically sit in here flush, like this, and that will hold the forge. Once I've done that, I'll be able to sit the forge in, line it up, make sure it's perpendicular, and then measure off to cut out the doors. Just dunking these caster wheels in hydrochloric acid to remove the zinc coating and make them safer to whirl. I want to talk briefly about why I'm making one project video per month for a year. For a start, creating things makes me happy. My mind is always active. Even when I go to bed, I'm always trying to solve little problems. I enjoy this immensely. So in the end, it comes down to enjoying the moment and evolving as much as possible within the limitations of my control. Limitations are things like time management, concentrating on providing for my family financially and being present as a husband and father. Part of evolving requires experimentation, having a growth mindset, but understanding how to set achievable goals. You want to push the envelope without tearing it. I've got enough weaknesses, so I try to focus on my key result areas. Creating things has always been in my wheelhouse. I know I can achieve small successes by turning up consistently, committing systematically to achieve small chunks of success. So this is where the idea came from to make one thing from start to finish in four weeks. To do this for a year will sometimes be tough with all the other things going on in life. But we perform our best on the edge of uncomfortable and I've already learned new techniques and pushed myself beyond purely functional. I don't want to rely too much on technology to measure my success but it certainly does provide an awful lot of motivation when people commit to me as well. This can be commenting, sharing, or subscribing to my channel. I'm also open to feedback. If you like what I'm doing, please share your ideas. What do you like? What could be better? Right, that's enough of that. Let's get back to the build. The Gamco Single Burner Forge Kit is an affordable way to build an effective forge. The kit has just the right amount of materials to fit inside a 9 kilo LPG bottle. Start with the ends and then wrap the centre section around so both ends meet as neatly as possible. It's really important to wear a good quality respirator. You don't want to be breathing this stuff. In essence, kale wool is made from synthetic fibres that won't break down in your lungs. I also wear gloves and wash all the clothes I'm wearing straight after. Most of the techniques I'm showing here are borrowed from other people. An example is the sharpened hacksaw blade. There's no need for reinventing the wheel, the problem's already been solved. The sharpened hacksaw blade allows you to puncture through the car wall without pushing it inwards. I ended up using some of the offcuts to build up the floor section, just to make sure I didn't run out of refractory cement when building up the final floor surface. My goal is to provide a completely level surface from the bottom edge of the front door, across the cement floor, and over the bottom edge of the back door. To mount the burner, two hole cutters are used so the hot edge of the burner is inch laid against a step of kale wall. The wider diameter hole is measured in halfway. I'm using the same hole cutting bit I used to drill through the LPG bottle. The smaller diameter cutter matches the inside diameter of the burner. Then I use the hacksaw to carefully remove the material from the wider hole. With the two-step hole cut, it's time to spray everything with the rigidizer. The rigidizer is a compound which creates a hard, heat-resistant surface for the KO wall fibers. It's important when using the forge not to pierce the sides with lengths of iron. You don't want to allow those ceramic fibers to start floating around. In this shot, I've flipped the forge over so I can lay some paint down before welding into place. I only tack weld the forge in four places. One tack weld for each of those cradle brackets. 
There's plenty of holding this forge in, and one day I might want to repack the car wall or keep the table and put in a different forge. The kit comes with a bag of Duracast, which is a mixture of cement and refractory graded aggregates that can withstand high temperature. It's very easy to mix up, just add a little water as you mix. You don't want to end up with a sloppy mess. The dry mix that sits pretty high and stiff on the trowel is what you're after. It's not shown in the video, but I ended up using this as a screed board. Resting across the front and the back of the forge, got it nice and flat. The trowel was good for loading the cement into the forge, but this actually did a better job of leveling it out and getting it nice and flat. Let's weld this thing up. I didn't bother filming all this part because it's just more welding and cutting. There's a couple of bits of flat bar in here. These are 5mm and a 3mm bit here. That forms a channel which is flush with the back of the forge. So this fire brick can slide along the channel. Control how much oxygen gets in the back there. The sliding tool rest will be handy for balancing longer pieces of iron and I've set the distance of the rails so most of my hammer handles fit through the gap and hang on the hammer heads. I made up a simple handle for tightening up the tool rest, welded a bolt into the centre and a nut onto the rail that the handle threads into. I'm going to skim through the draw section. It was a bit of a long and fiddly process, but the frames are 25mm angle iron, then clad with 1.5mm black sheet. The total empty draw weight is about 10 kilos each, and the runners support 45 kilos a set. That leaves 35 kilos for bits of steel. For drawers this size, that may not be enough, but time will tell. If I was building this trolley for a customer, 
I'd advise against the draws. They added a lot more complexity and time to the build, which meant I had to reduce some of the other detail I had planned. Simple shelves would have done the trick for storing metal offcuts. Having said that, the reclaimed timber faced drawers and raw steel rivets do add some visual style to the piece, so I'm pretty happy with that, even if the draw frames are a little rushed. Using a soapy solution to paint over any of the joins, just to test for gas leaks. Here's an example of a bad seal. It's pretty obvious. Overall, finishing this within a month with limited time was ambitious, but it's extremely solid and it'll help me add a handcrafted finish to future industrial style furniture projects. It's the perfect size for working on various small blacksmithing projects such as tool making and knife making. I've also got a few handcrafted latches and handles in mind. If you want to see more of my projects, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you find out when my videos are published. I'd like to thank Bretto from 1200 BC and Steve from Tonk for allowing me to use their music in this video. I'm also looking forward to using my new tongs from GS Tongs. He has a great YouTube channel on blacksmithing that I'll link in the notes. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.